Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna go over how to use a snow plow on a UTV slash ATV. Check this out. Okay, well in this video, we're gonna go over how to use a snow plow on a utility vehicle. Uh, so we have a John Deere Gator out at our office here. Uh, we'll be running a Boss Power V uh, plow. It's a pretty large plow for an ATV. Uh, about a, a little over six foot plow, but we're gonna go over how to use that. Uh, as with everything on all my videos, I'm not an expert, not claiming to be, I'm just gonna show you kind of what I've learned. Uh, this is, what's really valuable is you leaving comments below. If you are a, if you use these plows a lot, put your tips and tricks in there. Uh, where I've already done, I always advocate doing a pre-op inspection on even a gator. So we've already done all that. Uh, we've done a little bit of plowing with this one. We've checked the plow and everything like that. Now with this, it again is a it's a V plow, so it's you've probably seen these on pickups. They're not not very often on util on uh, ATVs or anything, just because they're big and heavy. Uh, so this is probably maxing it out here. You'll notice on our Gator, it sits low. I mean, it's a little bit different than running a V on a on a truck that's just got a lot larger mass. You're talking about a six or seven hundred uh, six or seven hundred pound plow. Um, so it does sink down. So we haven't changed out our shocks on the front. Uh, just because it's, I hate changing them between season, but a lot of times they do recommend putting uh, stiffer shocks in the front. One way we compensate, we add ballast, bad weight. So typically a pickup will do the same thing. You want to get weight back because you're pulling all this, especially when that plows out in front, it's pulling down in that front axle. So you really need to try and compensate that in the back. So what we did is we got a big old boulder and some sandbags. Uh, it's probably, I mean, really no different than what you do in a pickup as well. However, I think it's just more uh, when you have a smaller machine. I love running with this Gator because it's so, it's a smaller machine, it's easier to get around, uh, but it just doesn't have the weight that a pickup does. So I'm going to go ahead and get in the cab and then I'm going to show you all the controls. Okay, so we're in a John Deere Gator 825. Uh, again, probably a larger utility vehicle. We have the bonus, this thing's enclosed glass cab. I love the Gators with their glass cabs, got great visibility. Um, and it's got a lot of power, so that works for plowing with something like this. Now, typically I'll go over, uh, controls like this are very standard in almost any plow truck. Again, they usually have something you put your hand through, that way you can keep shifting. And I'll go over the controls, but essentially on this boss plow, you've got your up and down, and then you've got your wing tips there. And the beauty of this is, uh, I really like these because you just hold both of them. We'll go left or right on it. Um, so they have each individual. I'll go over those controls. And then, you know, my shifter, we're in four wheel drive on this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. So first thing, put the seatbelt on. So as with any of our plow videos, well, really operating any equipment, can't stress the seatbelt enough. I know some people don't like wearing them, but if you've ever plowed a lot and you hit something, uh, you'll be an advocate for seatbelts really quickly because it's just that force of hitting something there, so. Okay, so real quick on the controls, there's just an on off on this right there on the top. And then it's as simple as if I ray push up, it's gonna raise the blade up, goes all the way to the top, and then if I go down, it will drop it down. Uh, and then bring it back up. And then I've gotta, if I wanna swing the whole thing, I gotta push both buttons down on this one. So that goes all the way to the right, and this will windrow it to the left, like that. Then you've got all of these individual ones. So if I wanna scoop, I can push on both. Well, right now I just need the left tip up but you'll see that'll bring it up into that uh, power V, that V format when you're need, trying to scoop. And then you can control each one of these. If I was to do a trail or something, I can actually push both down and bring that down. This is really handy if you're using this uh, uh, to do any trail clearing that is just the width of the, the gator. You can basically go through it, so. Now you'll hear on this machine, again, these are, they take a lot of power. Um, we're using a standard uh, Gator 825. There's no, uh, you can get a larger uh, battery on it. Um, and I think, the, like I said, the shocks in the front. Um, so, kind of go over that. Now, kind of going over, typically when you're driving, it is typically a regular snow plow. Uh, on a truck, you would have it at an angle, just so you let airflow. We don't have, our, there's no radiator on the front of these. 
but it's still you want to have uh, you still want to drive in cautious. You're you're still a lot lower to the ground is what I think I'm trying to say is your tips uh, will be a lot lower. So sometimes it's not quite as flat like that. It might be not totally at an angle when you're driving like that. So now with this, we're wind rowing. I think uh, you'll see one of our other videos on top things not to do. Uh, the biggest thing there is have a plan, know your site. This is our office. We plow this all the time. Typically wind rowing is just going all in one direction. So this today we're just going to be going all to the left. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that, when we if we have doing cleanup, we can go to that V formation. So, okay, I'm gonna back up here. Now I've already done some of the clearing here. So basically, I'm going like that all the way, and then I'm going down, and I'm basically just doing this at an angle, wind drawing it over. At the end of this, I just start picking that up and driving into it. After that, raising it all the way up. Looking where you're going, backing up. Now the key here is knowing uh, how much, like we've probably got eight inches or so. So the gator can only push so much. You're gonna notice this a lot different than in a car, or I'm sorry, in a truck. Trucks have so much weight that it's going to keep that in straight line. As I go on this, it's going to want to push me away from that snow. So uh, you really have to compensate sometimes going towards it. And then the other thing is you're trying to avoid spillover. So if I go too far over, you're going to see I'm going to have material come over on the side. You're trying to do it so you're not getting material that's going to come off the side. Actually, that one I didn't really. I'll do one more here. If I go a little bit more aggressive here. And you'll see I'm really steering. If you saw how, you see what it did to my steering wheel actually. Uh, I'm so used to holding the steering wheel. That's what it does. And you won't see that as much in a pickup. So I think people are, when they start using a Gator or something smaller, UTV, they don't realize how much more important it is. And then the final thing, so again, typically you're going to wind row it. The problem is with a smaller gator like this, it may, depending on how much you're trying to push, eventually not be able to do it. Um, and then this is where the V formation is really handy. If I'm trying to carve, if I'm not trying to carve in a spot there, you know, if I, if I don't want to roll it off, this will basically scoop it together. And you can kind of see it come together as one. And I'm raising it up while I'm going in. Now you've got to be careful on running something like this, pushing too far into the pile. There are so much lower. <laughs> it is not fun to basically get a shovel and scoop yourself out. I've done it several, several times. So just be careful how far you push in. This is where it's great for cleanup if you go into that V formation. And then as I'm raising, I raise it a little bit. I try and keep pushing it in. Well, you'll notice these won't have near the power as what a pickup would have or any larger piece. And then typically you do want to try and you're always going to park these things. So I got it there, parking brake on. And with all that weight, it's really important to set these down flat on the ground. Uh, it's just putting so much uh, pressure, uh, weight on that front axle that you really want to have that thing uh, flat on the ground. So uh, then we'll go ahead. I'm going to shut that off. Okay, everyone, that's how to run a snow plow on a UTV or ATV. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, I'd love to hear comments from anyone that runs these a lot. Tips, tricks, things you've learned. Uh, please post those below. I uh, appreciate you watching the video. We'll see you on the next one.